It's about Sam Stenny, a young lad who was a brilliant student, became a doctor in, at, at the age of 22. He joined the Navy in 1940, served in cruises in the Indian Ocean, and then went to the Mediterranean in a destroyer, HMAS Waterhen, part of the scrap iron flotilla, where she was sunk. Sam survived, obviously, was posted to the light cruiser Perth, also in the Mediterranean, and then came back to Australia in 1941. He stayed with the ship when she was sent up to Java to try and help defend the place against the Japanese. Uh, they failed. His ship was again sunk. This time he was captured by the Japanese and spent most of his war in prison of war camps in Japan. He returned to Australia after the war, resumed his paediatric practice, which he'd started before he joined the Navy, and eventually became a very famous surgeon in that area in Sydney. I wrote a book about Perth, and I left Sam and his mate struggling in the oily waters of Sunda Strait, and I wondered what happened to him. So I started my research, and I discovered he had quite an interesting career. In fact, I thought he was a man we should know more about. He's a fine Australian. And from there, it just led on to research here in Australia, in the UK, in the US, Canada, but more particularly in Japan, because I think the Japanese uh, suffering during the war has not ever come clear through the prisoner of war accounts we've read. I think Australians deserve to know more about Sam Stenning. They also deserve to know more about the prisoners of war who didn't serve on the Thai Burma Railway. Things were tough in Japan for everybody, not just the prisoners. And I think the book will come as an eye-opener to many people who think the prisoners of war had something to do with Southeast Asia. I was in the Navy for 35 years, and the Navy gets a raw deal when it comes to history. We get swamped by the Army and the Air Force, mainly because they've got the big blood lists, the, the big body counts, and the Navy doesn't. So I enjoy doing what I'm doing, showing Australians what the history is. It goes back well before Captain Cook, and I think a lot of Australians don't know it because they haven't been taught it, it isn't taught in schools, it hasn't been researched properly, it hasn't been delivered to them properly. That's what I'm trying to do. A well, reader will take what readers take from any history, but the first thing is to realise uh, how stoic, how, how strong Sam and his fellow prisoners were. Not all prisoners behaved with dignity while they were in prison, but Sam certainly did, although it nearly broke him in the effort. But nevertheless, he set a fine example to Australians generally, and to prisoners of war of other countries as well, how to conduct yourself. As well as that, of course, he overcame the difficulties, the mental difficulties he returned from prison with uh, to resume his career and make a success of it. It is very important uh, in the paediatric world in Sydney and a lot of kids alive today owe their life to Sam and people like him. Above all, this is a love story. I want people to realise how strong the love was between Sam and Olivia, which kept the two of them going literally until death did them part.